And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with the Game Boy Geek. Ahoy there, mateys! It's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we are pirates. We're on our ship. We're going to be raiding other pirate ships. We're going to be blasting them with cannons. We're going to be going to an island. We're going to be grabbing some treasures, bringing them to our boats, and selling them, hopefully, to a Tortuga. Uh, so here we go here. This is a game of two to four players. Um, it's ages eight and up. Takes about 35, 40 minutes to play. It's a light game. There's some dice rolling, some moving around, some take that, some messing with your buddies. Let's take a look. I'll see you on the other side. At the beginning of the game, everybody gets to pick their color. This is yellow. It comes with a shield, and it comes with the board, but when you flip this over, it becomes your player board, which is a nice touch there from Queen Games. And the back of the shield actually has some charts that you'll be using during the game. So I have my board set up to start with. There's a start player token, this big ship, pirate ship. We get one, two, three, four, five dice that each have different logos and numbers on them. We'll go over this later. It's behind my shield. I have my board put together. I have a ship icon that's on the third spot. I've got a person that's here on the third spot, and we start with a treasure on our island and on the, the first spot here. There's also an island out here that has some bonus tokens, some tokens that will get uh, that have some coins on them, and an island here and a bag full of treasure. What you'll be doing over the course of the game is rolling the dice, uh, activating different spots on your board, and what you're trying to do is get treasures into get treasures off the island and have your people bring it back to the boats and have your boats bring it to Tortuga. And the game will end once six, six, any one player has six treasures from Tortuga. So you're trying to get treasures and bring them all the way down. Let's talk about how a turn works. Now here's the, the back of my shield just to show you what happens. So this die here is a four sword. We see a four sword. That means that this die has a five for the chest, a three here, a two here, a one here, and an A for the skull. So each of these dice are actually quite different and there's different values for each one. Now on my turn, I'm gonna roll a dice and I'm gonna choose which ones to keep. Now once you've rolled, you can keep any one die, or you can keep more than one die if they're the same. So I could keep this ship, or I could keep this one treasure, or I could keep these two treasures, or I could keep these one, one or two of these uh, cannons. So let's say I keep the two treasures. So what I do is I pick the rest of these dice up. Once everybody's ready, we reveal, and then we place them on our board. And I have a four and a two in the treasure, and I would take these, and I would put it in the treasure box. Of course, there's the person, there's the boat, there's the cannon, there's the sword. You would be putting dice there um, in the respective spots. Now also notice that I have a person here and a ship here, and you could see the different places you could put the dice on the sword or the cannon. For example, if I had two, uh, sorry, two swords here that I was placing, and I rolled another sword and I wanted to put it there, I can't, because I can't go any further than where I have uh, the ability to do so. If my guy was here, I could then put a third one, but for here, I couldn't. The same thing happens over here. You can never put dice further than where your ship or your person, your pirate is. With my rest of my dice, I would roll again, and the skull can be a wild anything, essentially. And so the skull can be, uh, it can be added to this, so if I wanted to use this, it could be two cannons. Uh, if it went here, it would be, uh, two ships. Now keep in mind, this is an A skull. So when I'm looking at this, I know that this die has one, two, three, four, five for values for these different, these things here. Now, if more than one player has skulls, once things are are, 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 are shown like this, then starting with the start player, they get to flip this over to what they want and everybody else does the same in clockwise order. And let's say I did go with two cannons. This would be a three cannon and a two cannon. So you go ahead and go like that. And then we would, after everyone placed their things, we would roll again and I would roll my die again and I have a ship. And so this is, go, after everyone reveals, this is going to go there. Now, since I use multiple dice on my turn, it's possible that I have run out of dice before other people. For every single one that, uh, for every dice roll that other people have to make that I don't have to, because I'm done, I take one of these bonuses from the island, they're either they're one or two, you take a one, and I could put it on anything. So I might be able to add a one bonus to, let's say here, for example. Now later on, if another one gets rolled, instead of taking a one and put it somewhere else, I can flip it from a one to a two, and the most you can have is twos at everything. It just gives you a little advantage for, for, being, for using more dice early. 
once everybody has all their dice on their board, we start to resolve all these uh, in order from left to right, top to bottom. So we go for the ships first. We add up the numbers. So I have four and we look at everyone else's and whoever's first gets to move their ship two boxes to the right. Whoever's in second place gets to move their ship one box to the right, which will allow them to have more treasure in the boat going to Tortuga. If it's tied, the start player gets to go first or the person closest to the start player gets to be first place. Now these are all rules for three or four players. There's variants for two that things worked a little differently. Now for the pirate, whoever had the most here would get to go up two on the person, which would allow them to carry more treasure to the boat. And if you're in second place there, you get to go up one. And that's what happens here. Now with the treasures here, the person in the first place gets to draw one treasure chest from the bag. And it's a different treasure and put it on their island. And then they get any two of these tiles. Now these are secret. Right now this would be worth three and four. Four gold, but I keep these secret face down behind my shield. Second place gets to just take any one of these and put it behind their shield. Now, the cannons. If I'm winning the cannons, let's just say I'm winning, I have three, four, five, six, seven with my bonus. Let's say I'm in first place. What I get to do is steal a treasure from anybody else's sort of fleet area. So I can take this treasure from this person and put it in my island. So it would go right here. Now also, a player takes their boat icon, their boat ship, and move it down one. Now, if they have at least, the person I attacked have it, has at least one die in this area, I also have to move mine down. It's sort of a defense to have your die there. So Orange had a die there, so I would also have to move down. So having that is sort of defense. Now this player, sec, let's say this player was in second place. They can attack anybody except who was already attacked here this round. So you can't have one person be attacked by more than one person in this round. Let's say he goes back and attacks the yellow player. So the yellow player would go down one. And since he has a die, orange would also go down one. So there, they're both beating each other pretty bad. And then if there's any treasures here, they can take one treasure from the island and put it in their island. And they would put it right there in their island. Now the last spot works exactly the same as what I just showed you here, except instead of doing it on this track, it happens on that track there. After all those moves are done, we do to the move the treasure chests. First, everyone draws a treasure from the bag. Ooh, I got lots of yellow here. And they put it there. Then we move the treasure chests uh, from the area to Tortuga. So we take any one of these. If I had treasures here, I would move it here. Since I don't have any, I now am moving treasures from here over to here. And then I'm moving treasures from here over to to here. Now notice I have two extra in the in the island, but I can't place them because my guys can only hold up to here. Now if I was up to here, I could put the other two treasures, but I'm not. I can only hold up to here. These would go back into the island. And so I had one yellow that would go here. You can only have one treasure of each color on the island. Now that would end the round. You'd take all your dice back and you would continue to pass the first player marker to the next person, you'd do this again. You would continue this until someone has six treasures in Tortuga and the game would end. Now, for each treasure chest in Tortuga, it's at the end of the game is worth three points. For every treasure chest in your fleet area here is two points, and for every treasure chest here is one point. Also, you get three points for each single set of um, yellow, blue, and red. So I have a yellow, red, and blue here. I have a yellow, blue, and red there. Those would be two different sets, uh, and each of those is three points. Uh, also, you get a point for each box, one, two, three, that my ship is in, and one, two, three, that my, my pirate is in. I also get points for each of the secret uh, tokens that I had here. And then the player with the most wins. And of course, they have these uh, special purple ones, which are worth tw uh, two times the points as normal. So instead of this being one, two, three, four, five, six points, it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points. So I'd get seven here for having the purple. The white can be used as any of those three colors when you're making a set. So we had yellow, blue, red. I had yellow, red, blue. And I could have made this another color to try to make another set, but in this case, it doesn't make sense because I don't have enough. But essentially that's how you count up those points. And whoever has the most points at the end is the winner. All right, there's Tortuga. Now I typically like queen style games because I, I very much like the family style games. Games that are an hour or less, games that are easy to teach but still have some depth uh, and, and are just fun and thematic and have good artwork and things like that. This, this fell in that category. I like rolling dice and I love, here's the things I liked about the game. 
Uh, the artwork's beautiful. The components are great. Things that you would expect from Queen. Even, even the fact that like you flip your board over and it has the ship of your color. Those details that Queen always put in their games, they did in this, and it, they, don't, they don't disappoint in that regard. All the different custom dice of the different colors. I love the aspect that, hey, there's some hidden information. You, you roll your dice, people don't know what you're doing until you reveal. I like how each of the dice are different. So you've got, a, you've got a dice, a die there, and you're looking at the value of what it is, and you're like, huh, if I don't use this now, this could be something else later. Um, so I liked that aspect of it. Um, and that's about it for me. Uh, the, the overall game was okay. It was fine. Um, it didn't blow me away. I didn't dislike the game. Um, it was For me, it was just an average okay game. It was fun. It was. It, it didn't have any complaints or quabbles. I liked the dice mitigation factor of the different things. Uh, if you like take that games where you're messing with your buddies, this is something that you're going to like. If you don't like direct combat, half of the game here is messing with other people and going using the sword or the cannon and, and messing and stealing from other people. So if, you're, if your family's in a, in a state that you don't, they don't like that, then this probably game is probably not for you. But if you don't mind that uh, and you like that type of thing, then this game probably is something that you may want to try out. But it does have that, so be wary. That's, and I like that sort of thing, so I was fine with that aspect for it. But for me, it just sort of, I don't, I don't know, I can't put my finger on one thing that, that just didn't do it for me. Just overall, I guess the experience didn't sweep me off my feet. It didn't, it didn't make me go gaga. It didn't make me want to come back to it again and again. But it is a slightly, you know, it's, it is an enjoyable game and it was fun. It's just, well, there's a thousands of games that get released every year and this one didn't just, just, just wow me. So it's a decent game, great components, good family style game, but didn't wow me, Tortuga. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>